Good morning. All right, we're back in the shop again today. It's Saturday morning, pretty early. Um, if I'm sleepy eyed, excuse me. I'm I'm pretty tired. Uh, worked all week. Uh, stayed up too late the last couple of nights, tinkering around the shop, messing around on YouTube, things like that. Uh, got a few projects in the works today. Just thought we'd uh, flip the camera on and show you what we got going on today and um, what we got coming up. So we are, uh, got a little AC problem on a Hummer, a little H2. I'll flip it around here in just a second. And um, uh, he brought it in, dropped it off, left it with me a couple of weeks ago. I put a water pump on it, hit the seal had gone bad, and it dumped all the water out <clears throat> around the shaft. You know, it just started leaking out of the wheat pole. So it, uh, we put a water pump on it, and I charged the AC up on it at that point and found that the uh, high side and the low side port had some dye. I put some leak, detec te leak detection dye in them, and the high side port, when you take the cap off, it, it had pressure on it, and you could it just wasn't sealing. So that port I was able to um, screw off and replace separately. But the low side port's on the liquid line itself, and the, and the, there's a... Uh, orifice tube in between <clears throat> in the same line um, so you can't replace just the low side port and I believe it's leaking now um, found some dye and anyway we're going to flip you around and let you see this thing got going on is uh, an 80, uh, 80, it's a 2006 Hummer H2 and I was going to film this last night, let's see, show you what I'm dealing with, this air conditioning line right here, this is the high side port and this is the low side port, the liquid line goes from the evaporator all the way down to the bottom down there which you probably can't see to the uh, bottom of the AC condenser it goes through the firewall there's the top line the bottom ones down there so we've got um, we take this black light and you can see the dye glowing on that line right there all the way back to the evaporator speckled all the way down through there <coughs> excuse me you take your port caps off get a little bit there and I have I did evacuate this already which means I sucked the freon out of it um, but anyway I replaced this cap the high side cap that screws off but it does not screw off on this one so, and you can't just get this little line, even though it breaks out right here. That would be brilliant if you just buy that little piece. Well, they don't sell it anymore. You got to get the whole liquid line. So, <clears throat> doing some digging around. I bought the whole liquid line. So, you got both ports. The orifice tube is right here. <clears throat> It's uh, it's right here, and I guess you could probably change the orifice too by taking that out and popping it out. <clears throat> um, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to replace the whole line, even though I already replaced this cat, this port. Um, we're just going to put the whole line on it. I could break it out right here, um, but it's not too difficult, I don't think, to get to break it out here. At first, I thought it was going to be. Uh, I mean, it's not the easiest in the world. I've got to go through the bumper, basically. Um, <clears throat> right down through here, I've got to go through here, and there's a piece of foam in there. I got to move that to the side. Um, let's see. I got any light here? Grab one of my handy dandy lights. You can see that foam in there. Let's see. There we go. 
that foam in there is uh, hiding the bottom of the AC condenser and where that uh, line attaches. So I've got a snake in there, get the, the nut off of it. Then we're going to take our, our AC machine. I filled it last night. This thing has a slow leak. I've had it for a number of years. And uh, it's, uh, it's a great machine. It recovers, it vacuums, it charges, and uh, you can charge with the proper amount. Um, when I charged this before, I, I just did it with, um, I vacuumed it down with a regular vacuum pump. And vacuumed down with a regular vacuum pump, and then, <coughs> excuse me, getting over a head cold. Um, and then just charge it with my gauges. Just bump it on the low side a little bit so you're high side comes up the AC compressor kicks in <clears throat> and you kind of watch you know between 25 and 35 psi on the low side um, anywhere from about 150 to 200 on the high side depending on humidity and, and temperature outside really um, and you know, the temperature gauge in the vent you just kind of do it old school I do it like that a lot and I usually have a lot of success but since we're this one's being a little funny, so we're gonna go ahead and and um, do it with a proper weighing of Freon going in. Um, like I said, I, I evacuated it last night, and now I'm gonna change the line, and then we're gonna charge it back up and see what happens. Hopefully, this thing will hold. If it doesn't hold, I can't find dye anywhere else. So if it is leaking again, if it leaks out again. <clears throat> that's the problem is it keeps leaking out uh, if it leaks out again then it's most likely going to be the evaporator uh, under the dash which you can't see without pulling the dashboard out um, unless some dye shows up somewhere else so we're gonna we're gonna run it maybe shoot it just a little bit more dye in it and um, see what happens let it let that dye circulate through the system and let the customer drive it for a while and and uh it's starting to actually get cool now so uh, i don't know the 5th of september we've had our this is our first low humidity morning feels great i don't even have to run the fans in the shop this morning it's awesome um last night i was out here till about midnight and it was muggy i mean i was gonna film last night <clears throat> but i just it was so hot i couldn't take it out here without the fans on and it's so loud in here when i run all these industrial fans so I, uh, I decided not to. I was tired. I didn't feel like fooling with this camera and uh, figured I'd go in and get some sleep and not do it late night. Well, anyway, we're going to get rolling here. I'm going to get you on the tripod and uh, really not going to be able to see a whole lot. The way this thing's set up with this flip hood, you can't, <clears throat> you can't really film this one very easily. It's sitting up so high and the weird place I'm going to be, you know, down there undoing the line you might be able to set the tripod up, up above where you get a, a bird's eye maybe if I can get it up that high and uh, we'll see it's our half 47 feet of metal line that's trying to come out of a shoe box <clears throat> with a couple bends and a around the corner and it's not very easy. It's like they build the freaking cars around the parks. But no, never mind. They were trying to pull the parts out for repair. Just make it look cool. And as long as the car looks cool, it don't matter how it functions. That's 
can get to the nuts just fine to break the lines loose. Getting the thing out, <clears throat> that's another story. <clears throat> Through the hole all the way here. I don't know what I'm caught up on because I can't see it. Even if I pull this fender liner out, I don't know if I'll be able to see it. Let me pop a few of these plastic rivets out of this fender liner and see if I can't get some access. Because, yeah, I don't know, you know, I looked at all data at the labor guys and it's like seven tenths of an hour to put this line on, which I knew was full of shit. Because seven, these freaking labor guys, man. Sometimes they're pretty good, but most of the time not so much. You can do it seven tenths of an hour if you, you do one a day and you're a freaking total expert. It's the actual vehicle you're working on. <clears throat> but you know, you don't work on the same vehicle every day. This stupid fender liner, it goes way down there up and around and over the front of this header panel. How stupid is that? All right. I'm gonna break out the handy dandy trim tool. Try to pop these off. Maybe. Eh. Let's, let's just multi layer it. Multi layer it in plastic. That way nobody can get in there. Freaking A, man. I think I may have got it snaked around now. <clears throat> Sorry for the negativity. <laughs> I have a love-hate relationship with working on cars. I love it. I love cars. But I hate a lot of these modern cars. Just the dumb ways they assemble them. Look at there. Hey, we got her out. Didn't have to break anything either. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Hey, baby dog. You can't see Bailey, but she's under the camera. How are you, Bailey? Last night, take our little caps off. I don't know if you can see that. I got the monitor flipped around the wrong way. Those cameras never in focus, so probably can't. Uh, took our little cap off that side. These keep keeps this dust as much dust and debris out of these things as possible. Um, you know, I may put that back on, try to snake down there with it on. <clears throat> I 
I'm probably going to leave that on. Just try to keep crap off the seal, O-ring, and, and out of the line. <clears throat> I'm probably going to clip these little catch-on-everything-on-the-way-down catch handles off. gonna take a pair of dikes, side cutters, whatever you want to call them. Snips, snipperoos. We'll snip that bad boy off. Uh, just keep us protected as I'm trying to snake that bad boy down there. <clears throat> All right. Say a prayer for me. <laughs> See if I can get this thing routed back in. I talked a little trash about it. Huh? All right, the dog is probably gonna jump in the pond if you try to go out there and try to fish with her outside. Just beware of that. Don't hook her. You gonna be able to get it off the hook if you catch something? Oh yeah, I I I took one off the hook once. All right. I just gotta push the hook. If they swallow the hook, what are you gonna do? Just call me if you have trouble. Okay. Uh, 
That was our, our bracketry. A little plastic. It's got a new one on the line, so I, yeah, so I popped it off the fender. Something right here. What is going on? <clears throat> she needs to go over there. There it is. Alright. She's getting closer. We gotta work it a little at the top and a little at the bottom. I don't care. Dogs in the lake, whatever. Freaking live, you can't keep the damn thing out of the lake. trying to do something really freaking hard. Ah, like that. Just like that. Just like that. It's on the stud. That's a start. <laughs> oh, <coughs> so much for the cool morning. Now I'm sweating. I'm going to turn a fan on, stand in front of it for a minute. All right. Come on, baby. Come on. A little bit at the top, a little bit at the bottom. She's on. Hit the top. <clears throat> now, if I can figure out what to do with my ratchet. <laughs> oh man. There it is. There's the ratchet. There's the extension. Maybe I should put some of my tools away. That way I know where they're at. Then I just pile them all up on the end of the rack the next job and just dig through it like an old junk drawer. I don't know.
slapping engineer day. It's time to line them up. Line them up. It's time to slap them. Slap the engineer. Design this crap. I don't think you should get this dirty just putting one little freaking AC line on. I mean, good grief. Oh, me. I get a sip of water. It's tight, but I just don't like the way it looks. You got a, a stud at the top, and the hose goes in. Here, I'll show you. You got the stud that sticks through the hole. This goes in, but you got this gap right there so when you tighten it down that's your seal you see this gap and it makes you gives you a false sense of security that that thing is is sealing just it almost makes it look like it's cocked so i loosened it all back up and wiggled and poked and wiggled and poked tighten it back down we're gonna hope for the best hopefully it seals Well, no, we pull a vacuum on it. If it doesn't hold a vacuum, then we're in trouble. And we readjust. And then if it does hold a vacuum, we shoot Freon in it. And hopefully it doesn't leak it out. And sometimes that's just all you can do. Back down here at the fun end. No, well, they're both not fun. Neither one of them. Uh, that one you got to be a contortionist and gymnast to get to and this one you just have to be a gymnast and get in the baseball catcher's position for an hour and 45 minutes. Ow, that's my finger. Oh. Okay, I believe that's seated. You get the nut. Nut holding the nut. Let's see if I can get my freaking hand in there and actually turn a nut. It'd be great if they would have actually provided you a little bit of room when they built this vehicle to work on it. I didn't need that skin. It's not that important. I might have to be leaking a little bit. I might have a leak. Leave my ratchet up there. <clears throat> yep. Okie dokie. Let's go for artichoke. Uh, get on that nut. Today's lunatic. This 
can give her a little snug down. You don't want to crazy tighten it, bend anything. But you don't want it to be loose. It'll rattle. And now I just got to pop the holder in up here. A little plastic deal. Holds the line to the inner fender. vacuum test. It's got this new port caps. We're going to get rid of these. I mean we'll hang on to them for future. This is the, the caps off the other line. That one came with new ones so I'm just going to keep them. The new ones on the new line. And you got a high side port and a low side port. The low side port has a smaller hole high side port has the bigger hole. Low side is blue, red side is, uh, high side is red. Um, you can't hook them up wrong. got the line on we're gonna flip our AC machine on we're gonna open our ports now I, I recovered what Freon was left in here last night which was not much but we're gonna go ahead and we're going to vacuum just checking pressures it says 10 minutes um, I've vacuumed this system about five times already, so I recovered it last night. So I'm just going to do a 10 minute vacuum and hold. Um, you can see it's sucking down the low side, high side, it's already down. It's pulling down a vacuum. Um, it's pulling down a vacuum and and we'll check it when it's done with the vacuum test. Um, we'll see if it holds its pressure. If it doesn't and the needles start creeping up, you know you got a leak. Sometimes it'll only leak on the pressure side and not on the high side or not on the vacuum side. So if it if it leaks on the vacuum side you got a probably pretty big leak sometimes it'll only leak on the pressure side and I have a slight little leak at an o-ring or a crack in a condenser or an evaporator and it only opens that up when uh, it's got pressure on it so it's hard to it's hard to tell it's, it all works on voodoo it's it's <laughs> it's it's black magic so we just uh, we, we try to do our best at, at casting our spells and remedying the problems <laughs> with this gas this snakes through tunnels and orifices and changes from liquids to vapors and compresses and gets cold all right well we'll come back to that once it's done okay as you can see this been about 20 minutes and the low side is still almost all the way to 30 it's at like 29 and the high side is buried still under zero that's a good sign it's a good vacuum test so what we'll do now is find out how much free on this thing holds and then uh, charge it up see what she does Okay, according to all data and the sticker on the vehicle, I just want to confirm this uh, takes 1.6 pounds. So we're going to flip over to charge. It's at 2 pounds, so we're going to drop it down to 1.6. 
1.6 pounds. Press start to begin. Don't touch it because it's weighing the Freon. You don't want to screw the scale up. It's pumping it in. No gas flying out of any lines, no hissing, no smells, nothing like that, which is good. It's almost done charging. It's at 1.43, 44, 45, 46, little bit in. If I was to turn this high side port off, fire the vehicle up, let the AC compressor kick in, it would help pull that remaining amount in, which this machine is good about pumping in what it, what it needs. <clears throat> Caleb's going for a whirl on the dirt bike. Um, Alright, so it says press start to equalize your hoses. So we're going to press start. It says disconnect the high side hose. Um, open panel valves, which they're already open. Start AC max and uh, press start to continue. So we're going to do that. Take the high side off. fire this thing up. It's already got dye in the system. I may stick a little more in and show you how to inject some dye. And it's a very easy. It's something you can do at home. 
you got a leak. Um, they sell the little charge kits. Uh, you can't get a, a setup like this. I mean, you can if you if you get uh, licensed uh, for a, a air conditioning and um, get a, a big machine like this. But you could do it with the small cans. It's just it's a lot more difficult. And that's sometimes those small cans you'll end up shooting a bunch of air in the system uh, and just making things worse. Um, I recommend letting somebody with an AC machine uh, or at least a good set of gauges, a vacuum pump, and a thirty pound cylinder of Freon, something uh, professional, semi-professional at least, uh, charge your AC, you'll, you'll have much better results. You get lucky sometimes with the small can stuff uh, from the auto parts store, but it's um, it's hit or miss. And I, I've, I've, I've tried it myself. I had to do it to my own vehicle that leaked out on a vacation in Florida on the way down. The kids were a little in there. My air went out in my old Dodge, so I had to uh, stop, get a couple cans, and jack it in there. And it lasted for a little bit, but anyway, uh, we'll get a gauge in this thing. We'll go for a drive. All right. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna pop a temperature gauge in this thing. I like to use my flute meter. I've had this voltmeter, it's multimeter, uh, it's an automotive multimeter, it's a 78. I've had this thing since I was 18 years old, I'm 45 years old now. Uh, I got this when I was working at a Volvo dealer, it was my first, I mean, it wasn't my first mechanics job, it was about my third or fourth, but it was the first real professional setting, I would say. I did. Uh, independent garage a little bit before that um, I did um, an equipment rental company where I worked on trackers and bobcats and there were case case 1840s back then um, we had ditch witches and tillers and all kinds of small engine you know rental stuff it was a pretty good company but uh, I worked there for a short period of times so, you know when I was a kid I I jump job to job to job to job just to see him trying to figure out what I wanted to do and, and uh, who would give me a job sometimes and uh, you know you chase money a lot when you're a kid at least I did you offer me a little bit more money I'm out I'm out the door man I'm going so uh, anyway I bought this uh, and it's been great I've never had a problem I blew a fuse once and it uh, changed a battery a couple times and that's it I'm pretty pretty damn good meter um, anyway, it will take temperature. It's got Celsius and Fahrenheit. Um, it's got this lead that you plug up when you're, you know, taking temperature. So we're going to do it's still on Celsius. Uh, we're going to try to flip it to Fahrenheit. <laughs> I brag on the meter and it won't flip to Fahrenheit. There it goes. Um, all right. So. I think I'm having a battery problem. <laughs> I brag on this damn thing. All right, let me turn it off, turn it back on again. I've never had a problem with this until I put it on camera. I think the battery may be low. Um, so I know it's not 111 degrees in here. All right, let's try this again. It says 35 degrees Celsius, but I'm getting, getting a battery sign on the top. Yeah, now it's saying open lead. Uh, my battery's going dead. That's what it is. <laughs> Alright, well, I haven't put a battery in this thing in a long time. So, well, that's alright. We'll stop the camera and put a battery in this joker. Hey, alright. <coughs> I had to run and get parts for, uh... <coughs> 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 yeah. Sound great, Donna. <laughs> All right, uh, I had to um, go get a battery. I had to go get a nine volt for the voltmeter. So it uh, crapped out on me. So I, I, but I drove the Hummer to the parts store. I think it's blowing ice cold. So we're gonna test the temp anyway. Let's see where it's at. Uh, once we get the battery get back in this thing. I 
pop the screws back in it. It's uh, the only bad thing about putting a battery in it. Hell, I've only had to do it a few times, I think, in its life. So. Twenty-seven years, roughly, I've had this thing. The date on the nine volt I pulled out of it was 2017. So that battery's been in there for at least. That's an expiration date on it, so I bet I put it in probably 15 or maybe earlier than that. All right. Not getting the battery sign anymore. That's a good thing. All right. It's 81 degrees in the shop right now. The outside temp on the Outside temp, oops. Outside temp on the uh, truck says 80. So it's already going down to 45. You see that? Forty-three. That's pretty good. Forty-two. And this is where the door open. It is on recirc. So it's recycling the air that's in there. Uh, 43 degrees, that's pretty That's pretty good. We're gonna let it run for a little while. I'm gonna grab something to eat, I'm starving. And then we'll go for a drive and um, see, compare it. I'm gonna let it run for, I'm gonna let it idle. Let that gas and that dye keep circulating through the system. And we'll go from there. Shut that door, we'll see how cold it is after um, I go make a sandwich, come back and eat, come back from eating, and uh, maybe it'll be in the 30s in there. That's uh, that's pretty good. That's a lot better. I'm thinking that there may have been something wrong with uh, the orifice tube and the other liquid line because I couldn't get it to get that cold before. I mean, I got it down to 45 once, um, but it was like 75 degrees. It was like super early in the morning. Uh, it's 80, 83, 80 to 83 degrees right now. Sun shining. I just got back from driving it. It's condensating, dripping all over the driveway, which is great. Uh, just hopefully it lasts and doesn't leak out. So anyway, we'll, we'll come back to that after I eat. Oh. Focus, hey, focus, baby, focus. All right, so I'm back from lunch. Uh, made me an egg and cheese, pimento and jalapeno cheese sandwich. One of my favorites. And as soon as I got done, I started walking back out here. My wife shows up with Chick-fil-A, so ate two lunches. <laughs> That's probably why I'm fat. Um, or all the beer I drink. I don't know. <clears throat> but anyway, we're gonna. This thing's been running the whole time, so we're gonna. I'm gonna pop you off the tripod here and spin it around. Let's check the tempo on this thing. Nine degrees Celsius. It's 49, 48. It was colder earlier. It's been sitting here running. It probably needs to be driven. I'm gonna go drive it. 
I'm gonna drive it, Kelly. I'll be right back. She won't go with me. Get in the front seat. that right there. I liked 43 better than 51. It was 43 degrees before I went in there and ate lunch. But sometimes they'll ice over. Sometimes they'll <clears throat> Because I don't want to listen to that mess. down 49 out of the vents so hey I mean 40 degrees almost 30s 30 is your goal for efficiency if you can get 35 to 40 it's even better cut to a local elementary school my kids go to we're off to the round here 
house. This thing is running good. Put a water pump on it a couple weeks ago. Clean the air mass meter. Now we're trying to get the AC under control. It seems to be okay. Hopefully it won't leak out this time. I think it's performing better than it did before. I think that I think the expansion, not the expansion valve, the orifice tube may have had some trash in it. It's the first time I vacuumed it down. pulled in it was at 43 it's at 44 this thing's feeling good we're gonna wrap it up and move on to our next one hey you got anything out of this if you got anything out of this please subscribe please hit the like button it's gonna help this channel a lot if you'll hit that like button please hit the like button all right uh, this thing's this thing's a wrap unless it leaks back out and then I'll add to it but I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a wrap um, it took about a week for it to leak out before, so if it leaks out again, it'll be another air conditioning video, I reckon, but <laughs> hopefully not. All right, guys, peace.